Hello and welcome to the Car Carol channel. And would you see what we have here? This is a 2023 GR Corolla. First one in the shop. And the best part is, small disclaimer, this is not a demo press car from Toyota so we can check it out and give our honest review. This is a customer car in the shop. In for its first oil change, brake and oil change. And the best part is, Right before this car shows up to the shop, I was so excited to see the car and I was looking, where are we gonna say the video, this and that. But then I remembered, wait a second, we've never worked on one of these cars. I don't know what oil filter it takes, do we even have it? I don't know what oil it takes, do we even have it? So that was a very interesting half hour phone call to the dealership to scramble, figure all that out. We really got nowhere with the dealership. You'll see, we'll talk about that a little bit in the video. But something very special about this car that I love and I love the owner for it, this is not some garage queen that has wax all over it and nobody touches it, don't even breathe next to it. We're in the middle of winter. It is snowing very heavy today, actually, outside. And here's this car, covered in salt, dirty, not really clean. This is a daily driver. This is proper, folks. This is how you do this. This is the best part. Because in the end, Let's go through the list here. This is a Toyota, it, so it's gonna be reliable, relatively reliable for what it is. This is all-wheel drive, and a very sophisticated all-wheel drive. We're gonna take a look at it in a little bit. So why not? I mean, it's a Corolla. That's what Corollas do. They last forever, they're fun, and you can drive them every day. The GR Corolla is no exception, and I love that about the owner. Folks, we're gonna, do the first braking oil change. You guys are gonna join us. We're gonna check this thing out. We're super excited about it. I hope you're excited as well. Without further ado, let's get right into it. Well, let's take a quick tour around the car before we put it on the lift, lift it up, and do what the customer is waiting for us to do. First thing is, you look at it from the front, it looks like somewhat of a normal Corolla, maybe with a special bumper, but it's anything but normal. This entire bumper is completely different, actually. You have the real vents on the side and you have the GR logo right there. Very, very cool logo. But then we wrap around the side and this is where things, nothing but normal. This entire fender is actually different. It's pulled up, pretty big fender for, for this kind of car, makes it super wide. And interestingly, the brakes. For reference, just for size of reference for you to kind of get an idea, these are basically the same size brakes as a Tundra on a Corolla. Because why not? We're gonna take a look, at, closer look at them when we're underneath the car. Moving around the side, of course, says GR4 right here, because this is four wheel drive, this car, or all wheel drive. And then we get here where I feel like they kind of ran out of funds here because the body is the same. What is extended is actually bolt-on stuff. Not gonna beat them on that because this is one of the coolest cars to come out of Toyota land. To me, even cooler than the Supra because this one, Toyota gets all the credit. Moving back to the back, and this is possibly my favorite part. I mean, just look, focus on this section right here. There's just a lot of turns and curves. First, the body comes here, then it curves and it curves again, and then you have a, this very complicated corner. I love it. This is what makes cars cool visually, perhaps not serve a purpose, but still, this is what makes car guys get very excited about things. And then, of course, how can we talk about the GR Corolla without the three exhaust tips? I mean, look at those. Three exhaust tips. Not a lot of cars have those, but uh, we have three exhaust tips. One per cylinder, because, let's take a look under the hood. This is really where the magic is. Unlike the Camry TRD, which was basically a kind of TRD catalog special, this is proper, folks. I mean, would you look at this engine? This is an engine you'll not find in any other Corolla model, in any shape or form. 
This is a three-cylinder G16E GTS. I haven't even gotten used to the name of it. It is just a magnificent thing from the way it runs to the way it sounds, to the way it drives, and it's a three-cylinder engine. Let's take the engine cover and take a look. And I told you we haven't prepped a lot for this video because we got to do this pretty quickly, but three cylinders, which means three coils. And just by looking at this engine, kind of construction-wise, this is similar to those dynamic force engines. So A25, even the new turbo one, the 2.4 turbo, this is kind of that same engine design-wise. High pressure fuel pump right here, pretty cool, accessible. This is direct and port injected at the same time. You have both systems. You can see the port injectors right here and the directs are behind the intake manifold. This is, of course, turbocharged, so there's a lot going on here. Pretty cool engine. I like how it's very compact. You can tell it's small. There, even in a small car like a Corolla, you have a lot of room all around this to work on it. Pretty cool. These only come in manual transmission. And before we do the oil change on this, I want to say one thing. It's actually two. There is some old school touches here that are very interesting. Now, this is a super high-tech engine, but the control for the wastegate is vacuum operated. This is Toyota at its finest. Now, I can imagine they learned their mistakes from the uh, Tundra when they had issues with the wastegate, because that was electronic, and this is vacuum operated. I mean, what can go wrong with vacuum? And the other thing is, this does not have any kind of fancy VVTi. This just has oil control, very simple solenoids right here. Extremely simple design. The solenoid pushes the oil control valve inside, and that's what changes the angle of VVTi. Super simple setup. They don't have the electric motor or none of that, like the A25. Having said that, let's pull this thing on the lift. Let's get this oil change started. Well, we are underneath the GR Corolla. Let's do the oil change because the customer is waiting and we don't want to keep them waiting too long. So this is business as usual and this is the beauty of it. This is not some BMW modified this and that. This is Toyota land. Extremely basic. Drain plug right here, oil filter right here, and that's it. That's exactly what we're going to do here. There's nothing really special about this. We're gonna get our oil drain here. Take the filter first. There it goes. We'll let that drain for a while. And the best part about this is, this takes an N1 Toyota filter. Not even a special filter. This filter is basically so widely used among the Toyota lineup that this is the cool thing, because uh, some of the newer Toyota engines, like the twin turbo V6, they actually have a special filter that is more expensive and everything. This one just takes a regular N1 filter. There's that filter done. I'm gonna strain the oil. Again, it is also a 14 millimeter, just like every other Toyota with the same drain plug gasket. Exactly the same, nothing really special about it. And that's what's cool about this. It's in the end, even how cool this car is, it's just a Corolla. So if you have one of these, DIY, my friends, this is very, very basic. I mean, four bolts, cover comes off, oil filter is right there, drain plugs right there. This is the beauty of it. This is a car for the car enthusiast and when maintenance, basic maintenance is this simple, it's just even more beautiful. 
This is such a beautiful engine. One day we'll do a really thorough explanation of everything and do a proper review once we get one. It's a customer car. Again, we don't want to keep them waiting too long. And it even takes an exact same frame plug gasket. So there's nothing really special there. All right, we're all down to a dribble. New drain plug gasket, which is simple, normal Toyota drain plug gasket, nothing special. And that is a wrap for this oil change. And there is nothing really to it. This is extremely simple. This door goes back. This is a, if you own a Corolla hatchback, this is very, very familiar. And this is almost exactly the same as the other ones. Okay. There we go. Oil change completed. This is this is this was a very nice thing to see. Let's go explore the rest of the car. There are a few things that I want to show you guys. Let's take a look at a few things. The first thing is control arm. This is actually a bigger control arm and very different than the regular Corolla. Same thing with the ball joint. Same style that it bolts onto the control arm, so they are separate. The brakes, or rather the massive brakes. I mean, folks, until you see these brakes in person, you will not appreciate how enormous they are. I mean, I can barely, it barely fits inside this giant wheel. This is how big these brakes are. And let's remind ourselves, this is a Corolla. Yes, it gained a little bit of weight with additional stuff, but still, it's a lightweight car. Construction here, suspension-wise, is extremely similar to that of the regular Corolla. You have McPherson struts, you have sway bar links, just regular style. So, again, DIY friendly, very DIY friendly. One thing interesting here, the knuckle is actually steel, not aluminum. That is pretty cool. I think this is where, this is a Toyota-born car. And you can tell, because they took the regular Corolla, they saw what works and what doesn't, what doesn't, they got changed, what works stayed exactly the same. This is pretty cool. And then we look underneath it. First thing I notice is we have this giant brace here. And the other thing is the exhaust size. Folks, even V6 models will not have an exhaust this big. This is pretty cool. And then very far in the distance over there is a turbo. And the turbo is actually pretty large size. I mean, this thing is not a small turbo, it has to be said for a tiny little engine. And this turbo goes to up to 23 PSI. It's extremely high if you're in the turbo world, but that is the turbo for the GR Corolla. Something else that is interesting that I noticed here, they made another change to the power steering. The power steering here does not have the motor outside. The motor is actually moved back into the column for the electric power steering. The reason for that is you have to make way for the transfer case and the, and the axle coming out. This is pretty interesting change here, kind of went backwards. And then, of course, the most important thing about the GR Corolla is the rear differential. Now, I'm gonna say one small statement, and this might make some GR engineers cringe, or some GR owners, or everybody else for that matter. This rear differential is, how should I say this? It's exactly the same out of a RAV4. Sorry, folks. This is a good thing and a bad thing. Good thing because this is basically a bulletproof differential. Bad thing because as much as Toyota Marketing loves to make this into a giant thing, it's actually a very basic operation. Mechanical transfer case in the front sends power all the time to the rear wheels. And this is where the magic happens. This is where the split happens. This is a kind of electromagnetic clutch that engages. This is, I guess, where the part is slightly different than RAV4 because this has more control. It's a bigger unit. It can vary how much power is actually transferring to the rear differential. This is the only difference, but construction-wise, this is called a viscous coupler. This is the rest of the differential. Have to say one other thing. This is an enormous differential for the car of this size. I mean, this is unbelievable. This is very obvious that this is not here for just to help you with traction on snow. This is for serious driving. This is very cool to see here because this is a kind of proven and bulletproof system that is well utilized in this application. This is really cool to see. And last, let's look at the exhaust. My favorite, the three-tipped exhaust. There's something pretty cool about this exhaust. So 
you have two pipes that are naturally connected, they're always connected, and then you have a valve. So th the basic idea here is when the valve opens, it shortens the travel distance from the pipe through the muffler, so now the sound is louder. When you shut off this valve, it has to travel through the baffles and go outside. This is not something you normally see on Toyotas. This is very cool, and to know that this is actually Toyota's working is very cool. So time to add the oil. And we have a small situation with this car. And believe it or not, minutes before this car shows up to the shop, I was actually on the phone with the dealership for a very long time. First figuring out the oil filter, got that figured out, very simple N1. And then figuring out what oil goes in this car. I know it's 0W20, but is there a specific specification? Which there is, and Toyota actually puts it on the oil cap, because they know, don't go buying the cheapest oil, none brand, whatever. API SPRC or ILSAC GF6A. Now the problem is the Toyota oil does not specifically really say what exactly it is. It just says API SP. And then we look at Mobile One. It actually does say ALSAC GF6A, meets or exceeds. So in this case, I am not comfortable using this Toyota oil simply because I called the dealership and I told them I need the full specification of this oil. Half hour later, I was hearing more Googling than them actually giving me the stuff. So we're not gonna do this. Potentially this oil will work and be fine, but we're gonna use the mobile one because that specifically says what this car needs I'm comfortable with that, mobile one is good oil. That's what we're gonna use here. So let's do this. This car takes, according to the manual, takes four and a half quarts, and it actually, the funnel that fits basically all newer Toyotas is exactly the same, so that's cool. Because again, this is not some BMW Subaru project. This is all Toyota here, so that's cool. And, Let's add the oil. I'm going to go four. All right. Let's go start this car. We'll get a feel for the oil level. Just believe it or not, this is the first oil change I do on this engine, period. This engine really hasn't been in anything in the US that we know of, so this is the first time I actually work on it. So, gotta really check the oil level. I don't know exactly how much it takes. The book says four and a half. Let's start the car and we'll see. Okay, let's find out if that was enough oil for this thing. Check it one more time for good measure. I'm gonna call that good. This engine is so new, it's really hard to see the oil level on it but we're gonna call that good, and just so I can sleep better at night. Give this a quick wipe, although it is, I mean, it's a brand new car. It's really clean. What an absolute pleasure it has been to work on this. I love this car for the fact that this is 100% credit to Toyota. This is not some rebass BMW. This is not some, here's our fuel injection Subaru, put an engine together for us. No, this is all Toyota, and they deserve a lot of credit. This is a beautiful car. They took a normal car, they turned it into something truly special. I love this thing. I love everything about it, from the way it drives, to the technology, to the way it looks, to this engine. Look at the times we are talking, singing songs to a three-cylinder engine, but this one is really well done. And it sounds great, drives great. I love this car very, very much. 
And now, before we wrap up the video, I gotta go to my very, very patient customer who I'd like to give a huge shout out to, Ethan, who owns this car, brought it to us, was super patient for us to film this video. And if you guys wanna appreciate that too, write in the comments, thank you, Ethan, and thank you for bringing us this beautiful 2023 GR Corolla Core. Folks, I hope this video is helpful and informative. I hope you learned something new. If you like it, consider giving it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing to the channel. Check out some of my other videos. And until the next video, folks, may the Lord bless you and keep you. And you have yourself a wonderful day.